lesson, and welcome back. Today's lesson, demonstration lesson for you is from the Headway Plus book, and uh, Unit 1, it's a wonderful world. I have some questions here, and uh, we're going to use WH questions. Who, what, where, when, why, how, how many. And uh, if we look at the example question, I come from Scotland, so the question is, where do you come from? So, question number two is for Mr. Gregory. I was born in Amman in 1984. Please give me the where question. Where were you born? Thank you. And what about the when question? When were you born? Thank you very much. Mr. Lou, I live in Abu Dhabi. Where? Where do you live? Thank you, it's very good, yes. Uh, number three for Mr. Gregory. I live, oh sorry, uh, next one is number four for Mr. Gregory. I've got two brothers and a sister. How many? How many brothers and sisters do you got? Uh, we wouldn't say do you got, do you have, or have you got? Ah. But that's a nice try. Mr. Lou, I'm studying English because I need it for my job. Why? Why are you studying English? Very good. Number six, Mr. Gregory. I've been studying English for three years. How long? How long have I been studying English? Well, that, that would be yourself, but me. How long have you been studying English? Very good. And uh, number seven for Mr. Lou. I've been to Egypt, Turkey and France. Which countries? Which countries have you been to? Very good. Number eight, I went to Canada three years ago. When, Gregory? When did you go to Canada? Very good. Now, if we go up a bit, I would like you to ask your partner these questions and answers. So, Mr. Lou, if you'd like to begin with the first one for Mr. Gregory. Where do you come from? I come from South Africa. Now, Gregory, ask Mr. Lou the question. Lou, where were you born? In New Orleans, Louisiana. Thank you for that, gentlemen. That's very good. So we, we looked at the present simple in the previous lesson. And now I want to look at the past simple. Who can tell me, what is the past simple? Anybody? It is something that happened in the past. Yes. So we use the past simple for an action that's finished and the time is finished. For example, Now, in the present, and before now, we have the past. This would be the future, and any time before now, so the time now is 2.30, so before now, let's say 12.30. And 1.30. These are all in the past. This is the past before now. Any questions? No. Okay, let's just move on with that. Quickly get rid of that. That's our timeline. So, the thing about the past simple is that it's the same for all persons. With the present, you would use I, we, you, they, and then you go on to use the third person singular in a different kind of format. But here, it's the same. It's very easy. We can say, for example, I, we, you, they, he, she, it, all did something yesterday. So if I go like this, put this in brackets, did. They all did something in the past. Mr. Gregory, what did you do this morning? I had a shower. Very good, I had a shower. Mr. Lou, what did you do yesterday? I went to the grocery store. I went to the grocery store. Okay, so we should say, 
in the past have had is had. Mr. Gregory said, I had. And Mr. Liu said, I went. So let's put that with we. I had, we had, you had, they had, he had, she had, it had. The same with all the verbs. I, we, you, they, he, she, it went somewhere in the past before now. And uh, let's just go here. Blue pen. I had a shower. We went to the, let's just say shop. Who can tell me, what are these words here? What do they mean, these words here? What are they? Anybody? Yeah, for sure now. Yeah. So, these are the pronouns, these are the most important words. Uh, other words are, are simple nouns like uh, board marker or pen, watch is a noun, table is a noun, chair is a noun. But with a person, it's more professional, so we say pronoun for all the people. Or in this case, we can say all the persons. So they are the pronouns. And what part of the sentence are pronouns? Anybody? They are the subject of the sentence. So we'll put subject there. And here. Oh, it didn't come out. Never mind. Let's use a different colour. See, see what happens. Oh, that's bad. There we go. So, what are these? They are the verb. Okay? So, here we have the verb. B. So what does that mean here? What's this? That must be the object. The object, yes. So here we have the object. And this is your typical standard English structure. Subject, verb, object. And in the past, it's always the same. We have two kinds of verbs. Regular verbs, which end in ed, and irregular verbs. So what kind of verbs are these, Gregory? Those would be irregular verbs. They, they are irregular verbs. Let's put that there. Irregular verbs. Why, why are they irregular? What, why is that? Because they are different words to the present tense. Yeah, it's because they don't end in ed. Now we could uh, have said here, we went to the shop, we could have said, you walked to the shop. So if I say walked, or they walked, W-L-K-E-D, because walked ends with E-D, it means that it's a regular verb. Regular verbs end in E-D. So let's just put that there. So that's a regular verb. Any questions? No? Okay. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of that. Mr. Gregory, what did you do last week? Last week I went to the dentist. Um, Mr. Lou, what did you do last month? Last month, yeah. I taught English classes. Thank you very much. And these are past times. So after we have our sentence, we could say, I went to the dentist last week. That's last week is the time. So we have subject, verb, object, plus the time. Oh, okay. So, uh, we could say subject. Let's use the red pen. So, we have subject, plus verb, plus object. What, what do we have next? We have the past time, okay? Past time, or finished time. Time is finished. The action is finished. So, we could say, 
Can you give me some past times? We had one that we had. We had last week. What other past times do we have? Yesterday. What else? Last night. Last night. Now we can say last night, and we can also say yesterday evening. We cannot say yesterday night. We cannot say last evening. We prefer to keep them separate. Either last night or yesterday evening. Okay? Now we have a general knowledge quiz. I don't know if you can see that. It's not very clear, is it? That's a bit better. Let's go over here. So, our general knowledge quiz. Can anybody tell me, when did the modern Olympic Games start? Any idea? 1896. Very good, Lou. Yes, it is. 1896. Let's go to the next question. How long does it take for the sun's rays to reach the earth? Is it 8 minutes, 8 hours, or 8 days? I'd go with 8 minutes. Very good. It takes eight minutes for the sun's rays to reach the earth. What was Neil Armstrong doing when he said in 1969 that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind? Walking on the moon. That's correct. He was walking on the moon. If you are flying over the international date line, which ocean is below you? Is it A, the Atlantic Ocean, B, the Pacific Ocean, or C, the Indian Ocean? I think that one will ask Lou. The Pacific Ocean. Very good, Lou. That's absolutely right. Now, this is a difficult one for Mr. Gregory. What doesn't a vegetarian eat? Animals. Yes, a vegetarian doesn't eat meat. Ah, Mr. Lou, what does WWW stand for? World Wide Web. Yes, it does. Mr. Gregory, where were glasses invented? Was it Mexico, Italy, or China? Italy. Glasses were invented in Italy around 1300 AD. How many times has Brazil won the World Cup? Does anybody know? Three. It's not three, it's more than three. It's actually five. Does anybody know how many times England has won the World Cup? It's once in 1966. Let's go over here. Some more general knowledge for you. Where was the Titanic sailing to when it sank? Where was the Titanic sailing to when it sank? Mr. Lewis. New York, that's right. Oh, we have three answers there. Southampton, Rio de Janeiro, or New York? And the answer is, of course, New York. Anyway, number 10. Which language is spoken by the most people in the world? Is it A, Spanish, B, Chinese, or C, English? Mr. Gregory. I'd say Chinese. Chinese is spoken by the most people in the world. 11. Why didn't dinosaurs attack humans? Why didn't dinosaurs attack humans? Was it A, because they were vegetarian? Was it B, because 
they became extinct, or before humans were on the earth, or was it C, because they didn't run fast enough? Mr. Lou, what do you think? I know it's E. B? Yeah, I think that's the correct answer, actually. I would say B. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, according to scientists, as far as we can tell, uh, because they became extinct before humans were on the Earth. Whether you actually believe that's the case or not is open to debate. Number 12. How long have people been sending emails? Gregory, you're a computer man. Since the 1960s. Since the 1960s. Well, I think, first of all, what we need to do is have a look at our key. Here's a key here. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Uh, okay. This is your answer. The basic email message send and read software was written in early 17... No, sorry, 1972. Uh, would you like to read the rest of that, Gregory? And expanded later that year to become the largest network application for over a decade. This was the forerunner of the huge variety of people-to-people -people traffic that we see on the web today. Thank you for that. Let me just go back. I want to go back. I don't know what's happened to the others. Let's go back now. Right. Ah, that's what I was looking for. So now we'll have a look at the key. So, the first answer is B, then A, and then we've talked about Neil Armstrong, taking his first steps on the moon, B, and then uh, vegetarians don't eat meat. Um, number six, www, World Wide Web. And seven was B, eight was five. Do you remember what it was? Five what? Anybody? Five? No. Very good. Brazil winning the World Cup. Excellent. Let's go here. It wants to change. So now we're going to look at so 9, 10, 11, B, C, B, B. And uh, then we had what well, Gregory just read about the basic email being sent in early 1972. Okay. Mr. Gregory, complete the questions. You are A, and Mr. Lou, you are B. Number one, continue. What did you do last night? I stayed at home and watched television. Very good. What did you do last night? I stayed at home and watched television. Mr. Gregory, number two. What kind of books do you like reading? Horror stories and science fiction. Yes, what kind of books do you like reading? Horror stories and science fiction. Mr. Gregory, number three, A. Have you ever been to the United States? Yes, I have. I went there last year. What's it like? Uh, did you like it? Yes, I really enjoyed it. Yes, have you ever been to the United States? Yes, I have. I went there last year. Did you like it? Yes, I really enjoyed it. Mr. Gregory, number four, please. What is the teacher doing? He is helping her son with the second. What does your father do? He works in the bank. Okay, stop there. Let's just quickly look at that. Yes, number four. What is the teacher doing? He's helping Hassan with his exercise. Number five. What does your father do? He works in a bank. Mr. Gregory, number six. Why didn't you do your homework last night? Because I didn't feel well. Very good. You notice that is in the negative. Why didn't you do your homework last night? Answer, because I didn't feel well. And the next one, number seven. What are you doing next weekend? I'm going away. Yes, what are you doing next weekend? I'm going to a wedding. And finally, number eight. Do you have a TV in your bedroom? No. I haven't, just a computer. Do you have a TV in your bedroom? No, I haven't, just a computer. Now we're going to listen and check. 
If you have the lights, please. Tape script. Script 1.3. I stayed at home and watched television. Two. What kind of books do you like reading? Horror stories and science fiction. Three. Have you ever been to the United States? Yes, I have. I went there last year. Did you like it? Yes, I really enjoyed it. Four. What's the teacher doing? He's helping Hassan with this exercise. Five. What does your father do? He works in a bank. Six. Why didn't you do your homework last night? Because I didn't feel well. Seven. What are you doing next weekend? I'm going to a wedding. Eight. Have you got a TV in your bedroom? No, I haven't. Just a computer. Yes, so there we are. Those were the correct answers. Let's just get rid of that. There we are. So, 13. Okay, so now we're going to part 14. Uh, part 4, sorry. Is or has. Listen to the sentences. Okay, listen to the sentences. They all contain S. Apostrophe S. Right, is or has. The first one is is. Tape script 1.4. 1. My sister's a teacher. 2. She's on holiday at the moment. 3. She's in France. 4. She's never travelled to Europe before. Five. She's been there for two weeks. Six. She's going back to work next week. Seven. Her husband's a builder. Eight. He's got his own business. So this time I'm going to play it again, but this time I'm going to open the script so you can see the actual answers. Just to make sure that everyone's got the same answers. Let's open the script. And Tape script 1.4 1. My sister's a teacher 2. She's on holiday at the moment 3. She's in France 4. She's never travelled to Europe before 5. She's been there for two weeks Six. She's going back to work next week. Seven. Her husband's a builder. Eight. He's got his own business. Okay, did everyone get them? Yes? Okay. Thank you. Let's just get rid of that then. In some of those examples, we were using the, uh, the present perfect tense. Can you tell me what is the, the present perfect tense. And when do we use it? Anybody? When an action is completed. When an action is completed, I suppose we could use that as an idea. Let me give you an idea. I, I want to run this way. Here we go. Oh. So, uh, Here's our unhappy man. It's not very, uh, it's not very well lined up. But this is our unhappy man. Now this man, this is Lionel Messi. The reason he's not happy, why do you think he's not happy? What does he do? He plays for Barcelona. He's a footballer. He plays for Barcelona. So when is a footballer not happy? When he's lost his boots. When he's lost his boots. What about if he's injured? If he's injured. Maybe he has a broken leg. Mm. Yes. Because if he has a broken leg, he can't play. If he can't play, he doesn't get the bonus for scoring. So that's why he's unhappy. Let me just uh, show you something. 
So we could say the present perfect is the present from the point of view of the past. Because we would say, in the case of Lionel Messi, I have broken. So we're using verb three, the past participle. For example, I have broken my leg. This means, if I'm a footballer, I can't play football now, in the present. So it's a past action that has an effect now, in the present. Mr. Gregory, what have you done today? When I say today, I mean that part of the day which is now finished. What have you done today, Mr. Gregory? I have... I have travelled on the bus. I have travelled on the bus. Travelled is the past participle. Mr. Lou, what have you done today? I have ridden in a taxi. I have ridden in a taxi. Ride, road, ridden. So ridden is the past participle, which we use with have or has in the perfect tenses. Let's now look at making conversations. And we're using short yes or no answers. So we're going to listen to the breakfast conversation. And I want you to tell me how Elliot feels. Tape script 1.5. Making conversation. Good morning. Did you have a nice time yesterday? Yes. Do you want breakfast? No. Have you had any coffee? Yes. Is Toby coming round tonight? No. Okay. Are you leaving for school soon? Yes. How does Elliot feel, do you think? Unfriendly. Yeah, he doesn't seem very happy, does he? Let's just get rid of that. So, Mr. Gregory, you will be Dad, and Mr. Lou, you will be Elliot. Okay? Please begin. Good morning. Did you have a nice time yesterday? Yes. You want breakfast? No. Have you had any coffee? Yes. Is Toby coming around tonight? No. Okay, are you leaving for school soon? Yes, he's gone. And uh, I think uh, teenagers are like this at times. Not always, of course. But some teenagers, they do behave like this. I remember when I was a teenager, my mother would say, where are you going? And I would say, oh, just out. But I didn't know that she, this made her unhappy. Where have you been? Out. Where are you going? Out. So uh, here it's yes, no. And some teachers, uh, teenagers, they do respond like this. To respond is to say something back in answer to a question. So now we're going to listen to a similar conversation and I want you to tell me what the differences are. So let's go to our similar conversation. I'll open the script so you can see it. Gregory, if you'd like to. Uh... Tape script 1.6. Making conversation. Good morning. Did you have a nice time yesterday? Yes, I did. I went round to Toby's house. Do you want breakfast? No, I don't, thanks. I'm not hungry. Have you had any coffee? Yes, I have. I don't want any more, thanks. Is Toby coming round tonight? No, he isn't. He's going out for dinner with his family. Okay. Are you leaving for school soon? Yes, I am. As soon as I've finished this exercise. So what did we notice about the difference in the way the, this boy Elliot spoke to his dad from this dialogue to the other dialogue? It was a much more friendly conversation. Yeah, much more friendlier approach, yeah. Anything else? Well, I think that's really what we're looking for here, is much more friendly, or friendlier. Let's go there. Right, so this time, you will be Dad, and you will be the very friendly Elliot. 
Good morning. Did you have a nice time yesterday? Yes, I did. I went round to Toby's house. Do you want breakfast? No, I don't, thanks. I'm not hungry. Have you had any coffee? Yes, I have. I don't want any more, thanks. Is Toby coming round tonight? No, he isn't. He's going out for dinner with his family. Okay. Are you leaving for school soon? Yes, I am. As soon as I've finished this exercise. Thank you very much. Now we're going to... Well, we're not going to listen again. Unless you want to. Do you want to listen again? No, I don't think so. So let's go here. We're looking at short answers. This is great. Could you just switch that light off, please? So, we use short answers in English conversation because yes or no on its own can sound impolite. It helps if you can add some extra information. For example, did you watch the match last night? Yes, I did. It was great. So here we have that extra information. Now I want you to reply to these questions using a, a short answer and then add some extra information. For example, do you like cooking? No, I don't. But I like eating. And when we have the exclamation mark, it's being more emphatic. But I like eating. So, the first question I will ask, and then Mr. Gregory, I would like you to answer. Are you ready? Have you got any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have. I have four brothers and three sisters. Thank you. Mr. Lou, is it cold out today? No, it isn't. It is warm. Oh, thank you. Are you working hard? Yes, I am. I am sweating like a labourer. Thank you. Uh, did you go out yesterday evening? No, I didn't. I stayed home and read a book. Thank you. Have you ever been to Singapore? No, I haven't, but I have been to Moscow. Okay, what's the difference between been and gone? Can anybody tell me? For example, we can say George has gone to Scotland. This means George isn't here now. George has gone to Scotland. He's in Scotland now. And then we have George has been to Scotland. This means George went to Scotland and returned. And he's probably here now. That's the difference between been and gone. And I put that in because we have here in the... Pre what tense is this? Which tense? Present perfect. Thank you. Have you ever been to Singapore? Ever? What does that mean? In your life. Correct. Very good. So now I'm going to move along with this. Here we have our class survey. Number one. Have you got a computer at home? Student one, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Student two, yes or no? Yes. That's very good. Oh, we don't have three students, so we'll stick with two. Are you interested in any sports? Student one, yes. Student two, yes. Very good. Do you do any exercise? No. No? Yes. Yes. Did you watch TV last night? No. No? No. No. Have you been to another country? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Are you going to do anything after class? Yes. Yes. Well, the difference is so far, the only difference was with the exercise. Student one said no, student two said yes. Uh, student one, can you give me uh, a question for number seven for our survey? Do you enjoy doing homework? Very good. Well, what's your answer? No. Do you enjoy doing homework? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Lou, can you give us a question for number eight? Do you like reading books? And your answer is? 
Yes. Yes. Very good. So we only have one slight difference with the exercise. Let's move up here now. Getting information. Mr. Lou, could you read this, please? The United Nations invites famous people from all over the world to be goodwill ambassadors. For a partner, you uh, each have different information about Henry Burner, a writer who works for the UN. Ask and answer questions. Okay, so this is a uh, Frenchman who works for the uh, United Nations. He could be Swiss, I suppose. And his name is actually Henri Bernard. And uh, we've got, in your books, student A, look at page 151. Student B, that's you, look at page 152. And answer these questions. So, the first question goes, uh, where was Henri Bernard born? And the second, in Lyon. So if you'd like to ask the first question, please. Where was Henry Bernard born? Yeah, it's actually French, so it's pronounced Henri. Henri. And France. In Lyon, France. How many books has he written? Over 40. Thank you very much. That was just for practice, gentlemen. Let's see. Uh, thumbs up. Okay. So that concludes my demonstration lesson today. From that was Unit One from the uh, Headway Plus book. Hope you enjoyed today's demonstration lesson, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Thank you, teacher.